seconds the last time. Not far. Clifford Lee takes three off. Eight is Apache Blaze, ridden by Sean Levy. Five pounds higher for the course and distance win last time. Nine doesn't go. Ten is Hyanna, who reverts to the turf for the second start of the year. David Allen. And point in time, Ryan Tate rides for Mark Usher. So double reflection is your three to one market leader there on course. Apache Blaze looking for another course and distance win in the space of a couple of weeks, seven to two. Iconic Code is four to one. Amazing Michelle, 13 to two. Hyanna is eight to one. 16 to one shots are Rennie's Lady and Anne without an E. Pawn in Time is 20 to one. And Dream Malfunction, the outsider of nine at 33 to one. We've got nine to get through here in this 0-75, three-year-old Phillies handicap, going up to ten furlongs. We're starting Eddie by seeing a 60s icon. This is Iconic Code. She used to be trained by Mick Shannon. She's having her first start for Keith Dalgleish. A 22,000 purchase at November, and she's come back looking pretty well, and Dalgleish sends her down from, from Scotland for this assignment. Uh, and she showed good battling qualities to get on top in that race at Pontefract. She's got to stand at least half a chance of winning turnout. She looks super and will be the mount of, of Graham Lee. That is for Iconic Code. The one behind, quite a, a, a bigger filly. This is 11 point in time and just coming to the end of their hedge now. Number 11, she is trained by Mark Usher, who's been amongst the winners of late. And this is her first run in a handicap. Quite an expensive purchase at... 75,000. She's shown promise on all her runs on the all-weather. First attempt on turf today and a new jockey in Ryan Tate as well. And you think given the bit of ability she's shown, she ought to be able to win races. And as you say, she's a, a big filly who looks well. The one behind her, the sheepskin noseband, number eight, Apache Blaze. Robin Brisland is the trainer. Sean Levy will be the jockey, as he was when she was successful in what was only a class six, but it still took winning. And she came from the back to win here 10 days ago, and she's gone up five. A fourth winner from 16 runners for these owners with, with Robin Brisland this season, since they've switched them from Mick Appleby. Sean Levy, who was aboard that day, has the ride again. And she's a bonny looking filly. And she looked in a bit of trouble at the head of the home straight and found enough to get up near the line with a long run down the outside. When it looked at the first and second came down the middle that day and it could have been an advantage. So there may have been an element that she was flattered, but you couldn't doubt her resolution. That is eight Apache Blaze. Now the grey, who's to our cameraman's left at the moment, just at the end of the, the paddock where the pre-parade ring is. Last time she went round, I, I thought she was going to come and join you and I in the, the, the TV position. She had a little look at the, the exit, but she's walking along nicely at the moment. This is amazing Michelle, a, a novice winner at Haydock back in the autumn. She did struggle, surprisingly I think, in, in nurseries a couple of times afterwards. Here she runs with yeah. Connor Mercer on yeah. first time. Two ways of looking at it. One, that, she, that that race didn't take a lot of winning at, at, at Haydock, but two, that I don't know why she wasn't able to run quite so well in her next two outings. Perhaps the ground wasn't quite as soft on the final occasion, certainly, uh, although it was the run when she ran at Pontefract. But she did beat fillies who've done well off higher marks than she races off today when she won. So theoretically, she's very well handicapped. But just after those two moderate efforts at the back end, the jury's a little bit out. That is amazing, Michelle. The next one, you can only see the, the one digit, the zero, but I can assure you that's, that's number 10. We've seen two Champs Elysees already. This is the third one. It's High Anna, and she outran her odds on her return at Newcastle 12 days ago. Here she goes for Tim Eastby and David Allen off the same mark. She wasn't really entitled to be such a big price as 33 to 1 at Newcastle because she. She was a little bit unlucky in her run at Pontefract when so a long way behind Iconic Code on the final start, when she rather got trapped on the rails when the race was unfolding. Uh, Alex Soft, who was second in the Newcastle race, didn't do a lot for the form, but this filly's looking really well, and like Point in Time by Sean Elise. A couple going up in trip. The next one, we're just following the line, number five, just walking away from us now. And this is one that's dropping down in distance. It's Anne without an E. A Rip Van Winkle, £11 lower than her 
the, the mark that the assessor mm. gave her initially. What did you make of her return at Lingfield last month? Well, the winner is a decent filly, I think, Lubinka. She's a listed class, I would say, and she has got a run where, where she, uh, she's, uh, she was entitled to that original handicap mark of 82 but that was in a steadily run race and she really hasn't cut much ice since she's only running one running only one handicap uh, and she probably up against it in that mile and a half auction race last time she's worth a chance off this mark and she's just crept down another couple of pounds the next one along just going behind the the winner's podium this is wearing cheap pieces it's number three and number three is the chestnut white cheek pieces, and this is Dream Malfunction, and she was ever so disappointing at Wolverhampton when we last saw her. She was, because her previous outing was fine. That was at Lingfield when chasing home Soto Mayor in a handicap. She was she had form on turf when trained in Ireland by uh, J, J. P. O'Brien, and in the same ownership as there. But she's a little bit on the comeback trail with these first-time blinkers, that cheek pieces rather. Now, by my recollection, we've only got two left to look at. And the next one, the one directly behind the one we've been seeing, Dream Malfunction, that's going to be number seven. This is Double Reflection, a showcasing. Winner at Chepstow last summer on unseasonably soft ground. It's quite neat, number seven, just walked past us. And we will see her just being led away and see her around the corner. Carl Burke, the trainer, Clifford Lee, on board. She ran very well at Windsor last week. She did. She had a very hard race going down very narrowly to Stream, Stream Song, who has pretensions to being group class in time, one would imagine. So it was a very, probably a, a personal best. She won in the soft at Cheps, though, last year, so she seems pretty versatile regarding ground and trip, because the ground was fairly good at Windsor. So, with that sort of form under her belt, she, she'd be one of the leading fancies. Hi, Anna has won the, the best turned out prize. Now, if you were hoping to see Rennie's lady, I'm afraid I've failed you because she has exited the paddock, but we'll pick her up on course, the acceleration under Kieran O'Neill, a winner when she was last seen, but that is your lot for the time being, ahead of this 0-75, our fifth race. A couple of minutes to post time, let's have a look at the market and... The, re the recently raced pair of Double Reflection and Apache Blaze, eight days and ten days, 130 and 72, ahead of the returning pair of Iconic Code and Amazing Michelle, 9 to 2 and 13 to 2. Hyanna is 8 to 1, and without an E, having been as big as 20s, is now 14 to 1. Point in time, having been 20s, went into 11s, now out to 14 to 1. Rennie's Lady is out to 20 to 1, and Dream Malfunction is the shortest, uh, certainly of late, Dream Malfunction, 20 to 1. Here she is. Here's Rennie's lady, David Evans runner, Kieran O'Neill, on board, as he was when she was successful two months ago, Lingfield, at the end of February. She has gone up four. She's 20 to 1. She gets a bit of extra distance as well, another two furlongs. She doesn't do anything particularly quickly, Rennie's lady, but so you'd expect... Kieran to have her up with the pace early on and you know she's similar to their runner David Evans runner in the earlier race Felisa she probably could just had a bit of a rest and may come back a bit rusty double reflection running off the the same mark that she was second off last week at Windsor 73 yeah. her new mark so she's due up five yeah so she's that's presumably why there was a flood of money for her this morning. Probably somebody had looked and seen, oh, she's going up five pounds when the, rate, the new ratings were published this morning. She was into nine to four early. Drifted back out to 100 to 30. It was a really good effort that day when she made the running. She rather got away from them as horses can at Windsor. And the winner took a long time to reel her in, Stream Song. She may again get out on, in front on the lead and an equally capable claimer taking over from David Egan is Clifford Lee. Yep. Also taking off the, the three pounds in the onto a winner colours, the quiet reflection colours. Point in time has gone in. Mark Usher's team going well. Winner at Wolverhampton just yesterday. Rennie's Lady, one of the last few to go. And we're still waiting for Apache Blaze and Iconic Code as well. So last word from you, Eddie, with three yeah. left alone. I thought the front two were the most likely winners here, but all sorts of horses like Iconic Code, Amazing Michelle, 
theoretically well handicapped. And I thought Hyanna looked particularly well. So it's a competitive little race, or should be. Let's hope it is. Just past post time, can Apache Blaze, one of three Sean's Elise fillies in the lineup, can Blaise, she repeat you. the trick from last time? We'll find out with Mike. And she's the last one in. They're off. They're racing over a mile and a quarter this time for the download the app at 188bet Phillies Handicap. Iconic uh, play, a uh, code rather, was one of the slowest to begin. A race over towards the far side now, and the pace being set by double reflection. Clifford Lee out in front then from Dream Malfunction in the red jacket, a length and a half away in second. Close up on the rail then is Point in Time. Apache Blaze is next. The grey is Amazing Michelle, who races in fifth place. Then a couple of lengths then to the pink jacket of Rennie's Lady with iconic code on her outside. And at the back of the field, the orange cap of Hyanna together there at the rear as they continue over on the far side with Anne without an E as they race on towards the end of the back straight now. Double reflection still has the advantage though from Dream Malfunction. Apache Blaze is stalking these two leaders with on her inside point in time and Ryan Tate as they take the turn out of the back. In fifth place is Amazing Michelle. Uh, then comes Iconic Code. And then just behind this one, just nudged along briefly on that turn is uh, Rennie's Lady. And without an E is uh, next. And Hyanna brings up the rear in the hands of David Allen, who's pushing away as they race on down the home straight here. Four furlongs left to go. And still out in front, it's uh, double reflection. Not much to choose between that one, though, and Dream Malfunction. Nearest to us then is Apache Blaze, who won here, of course, last week. She's with the Sheepskin Noseman. Up the inside is Point in Time. They've got two and a half furlongs left to go, and without an E in the blue jacket comes under pressure. Amazing Michelle being driven to on the inside. Rennie's Lady is under the pump as well. They're up towards inside the final quarter mile, and Double Reflection, if anything, is pouring it on a bit more. She leads by a couple of lengths. Apache Blaze hasn't managed to gr grab her yet she's two lengths to the good here double reflection inside the final fell on they go point in time is keeping on on the far side quite well Hyanna doing all her best work in the closing stages half a fell on left to go Hyanna's beginning to get up to the leader here double reflection gathered in by by Hyanna and Hyanna goes on to win and wins nicely a double for David Allen double reflection in second place Apache Blaze and then point in time was fourth Hyanna didn't get the best of starts. She has done very well to win on her second outing of the season. It's her first success in her sixth race, going up in distance today and has relished every yard of it. It's a double for David Allen, as Mike said at the end of the commentary. Tim to be the successful trainer. Hyanna has managed to wear down Double Reflection. And I thought Double Reflection was given a, a good ride by Clifford Lee in that they got to him and then he was able to to wind her up and get her to go again at the furlong pole I, I thought she'd hold it you were less sure with seeing Hyanna and Apache Blaze running on after her yeah she got a feel a bit for double reflection and her connections because it's twice she's been nailed near the finish in the last week and she's going to go up five pounds next week anyway so but Hyanna who was never really traveling got the benefit of a real action ride from David Allen he persevered she's a bit slow to stride horse in the brown colours with the orange cap at the back of the field also slow to go was was point in time who was then ridden up to the heels of the leaders and double reflection got the start that Clifford Lee wanted and he was able to control the race for the most part there on from there on he got a, a couple of lengths lead from from dream malfunction in the cheek pieces and then point in time who was then a little bit lit up after that sluggish start and the winner actually was settled at the back of the field one behind her so Clifford Lee with a couple of lengths lead going down the back straight yes and for the first 10 strides it looked like there might be a, a tussle for that lead with dream malfunction but as you said the jockey on on her great treks just took her back and Clifford Lee able to set his own pace from then on in. Uh, although she was all, always fairly prominent, Point in Time has, has acquitted herself pretty well in, in her first handicap, first run of the season, currently racing in third, finished in fourth. But, and the eventual third, wasn't it? Apache Blaze also close up. And at, at this point, you wouldn't, 
you wouldn't be too confident no. about Hyanna's chances. No, because she was off the bridle and last and appearing to struggle. And it was only it was here where Clifford Lee just tried to stack them up, I think, turning in. He's done that job really well. Apache Blaze, the winner here last time with the nose band, comes up on the outside and looks likely to prove the biggest danger to double reflection. She may have just been flattered by racing on the fastest ground last week, but she's run another really good race, Apache Blaze. But here it looked as though Double Reflection would come home and gain a deserved win, as the winner was still struggling in last place, and she needed almost the whole home straight to get going. Below the two, she's still got five or six lengths to make up. Of some of the others, it looks like Amazing Michelle is going to need a little bit more relief from the handicapper. I think Rennie's lady has acquitted herself yeah. all right, and she just won pace. I think Rennie's lady's run really well after that shortish layoff, and I'm sure Mark Usher will find a race for point in time. If he can get her down a couple of grades, and she's rated 65, she can go down a couple of grades. She ought to um, ought to be able to pick up a race. But yeah, like the attitude of, of, of the runner-up, double reflection, she did everything asked of her. She just wasn't quite strong enough to hold off the closing the winner. And I pretty much impressed with the attitude of the winner as well because once David pulled her out to the wide outside and she saw a bit of daylight she's run home really strongly and showed a willing attitude I think it's the extra trip has really helped her she'd been running over a mile at Newcastle and didn't really get going there ran, ran pretty well but things went wrong for her Ponte fracture at the back end but here it's all come right for her uh, despite not looking likely at the turn into the straight She's one off a mark of 65. It's, it's such hard lines for, for double reflection, isn't it? We've already mentioned that she's going to go up five. And she's just, just got chinned off 68 here. So it's not going to get any easier for her. But she has a good attitude, and you, you'd think there's a race for her to win. Yes, yeah, she ought to win a race, and as, as should the fourth horse, I think. But a handicapper will probably take a dim view of this. Having uh, that's Keith Stone, I think the former trainer in the in the raincoat, who is uh, an assistant at the Easterbys, they have uh, and he's on hand to greet Hyanna and David Allen, second winner of the day. But I was going back to the the sort of point of view of handicapping. With the runner-up due to go up five, the handicapper is probably going to make the winners yeah. difficult. The, the winner's rating pretty difficult, and the way she races, she might not be a shoe in next time. She'll certainly want a race where there's plenty, plenty of pace on. There she is. Oh, she's won it all, hasn't she, Hyanna? She's won the race and she won the best turned out as well beforehand. A good afternoon's work all round for Tim Easterby's Hyanna taking our fifth.